In the last video, we did line and wash in a very simple form with a water-soluble line using water to pull out some of the color and give a sense of shading and form. In this video, we're going to do the more classic version of line and wash in which the line is not water-soluble. In other words, a waterproof line. You'll need for this a pen that has waterproof ink. Probably one of the easiest ones to find is a Sharpie marker. The ultra-fine Sharpie marker has a fine enough point for sketching, and so you might want to start with that to see if you like this technique. To give you an idea of the difference, I've written with the pen that we used in the previous video on the top line and the Sharpie marker on the bottom line, and now I'm just going to take my brush with a little water and show you the difference. On the top line, you see the ink moves, and in the bottom line, when I get it wet, it does not move. So this is what we want right here. There are also many artist's pens, such as the Pitt Artist Pen or the Pigma Micron Pen, that don't move when you get them wet, so one of those might work. You see, as I put color over this, the line is undisturbed, and that's what we want. In a pinch, you can use a ballpoint pen. That also, because it's oil-based or wax-based, will not move when you get it wet. Okay, so I'm going to use the same little pairs I used in the last video. And again, I'm just going to quickly sketch them. And even though this line is waterproof and it's not going to move when I get it wet, I still like to use kind of a wandering line so that the drawing has a relaxed look. Also, I'm keeping in mind that this, again, might be a travel situation where I don't have a lot of time to draw. So when I practice, I want to practice the way I'm going to be working in the field. And so I'm going to draw quickly and not be too worried about getting it perfect. Now that I have my drawing done, I'm going to mix up a little color. And I don't want to go over here and fill in the lines very carefully like a coloring book. I like to think to myself that I'm adding a splash of color. So I'm going to mix just a wash here of a medium green, and then I'm going to use my brush sort of like we did in the last video, just kind of letting it wander around, splash a little color on there, not try to fill in the whole pair, because those little bits of white actually work well as highlights. And maybe I want to add a little bit of that red blush, so I'll drop that in wet in wet. And then maybe we'll make a little shadow, so let's mix up a darker green and give it a little bit of a shadow shape so that it has a surface to sit on. It's very, very easy to do too much, so try to get yourself to stop before you do too much. But having said that, I will admit that I very often do too much. One way I try to keep myself from doing too much is I tell myself that line and wash is either a drawing with a splash of color or some washes with a little line for definition. So we could start again doing our washes first. And you see, again, I'm working quickly and not trying to fill in the entire shape, kind of simulating what would happen if I were traveling and I only have a few minutes to get this down. Maybe I'm even in a moving vehicle like a train and it's bouncing around, so I can't be too perfect. Now because I wanted to keep a little of that white highlight and I didn't want these pairs to blend and it's still wet, I left a little white in between the two of them as well as the white highlight. And as I put in the shadows, I'm also going to not completely touch the entire bottom of the pair. I'll let a little bit of touch here and there, and maybe some of the color will bleed, but not all of it. This is a little different than the way I would work if, in the, if I were in the studio and I'd have a chance to let it dry and come back and restate an edge. Since I don't, I'm going to leave that little bit of a white edge. Let's go in and put our little stems in. So we'll mix up a kind of a dark gray-brown. Just a little brush drawing here to put in our stems. And we could leave it just like this. Or, if we like, we can add some line. However, you will want to wait until the paper is dry, because if it's wet, 
you'll see the Sharpie works okay until we get to the wet area and then it doesn't write so well. Instead, it absorbs moisture from the wash and it takes a little bit to get it going again. When I'm traveling, often this means that I'll add the line later in the evening after I'm back at my hotel or back home for the day. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of line. Remember our, our plan is uh, a drawing, a line drawing with a splash of color or some washes with a little bit of line for definition. So here I'm adding just enough to help those pairs stand out from the background. With the pairs it's actually not too difficult because they're simple objects and people can identify them pretty readily. But with things like landscapes, a lot of times just a little bit of definition to show where the tree line is or the branches in a tree or the edge of a building can really help when you were um, doing washes while they were wet and maybe they ran into each other a little bit. I can also darken a little bit underneath on these shadows just to give them a little bit more definition, just to kind of sharpen up the uh, drawing and make the pairs stand out a bit more. So in this video, we've done the more typical version of line and wash, what people usually mean by line and wash, in which we either made a quick drawing and added some washes, or began with some washes and added a little bit of line later for definition. The technical aspects of line and wash, the skills that you have to have as far as watercolor is concerned, are actually pretty simple. The hard part comes in choosing a good subject. When you get out in the field, it's easy to become overwhelmed by the complexity of the scene in front of you, and it becomes a lot more difficult than two little pairs. So in the next video, I'm going to give you some tips for handling those complex scenes and deciding what to sketch and what to leave out. I'll take you on a little tour of some of my sketchbooks and we'll talk about how I made some of those decisions in the field and then we'll look together at some scenes and talk about some of our options for how to choose what to sketch and what to leave out so that you can do a successful line and wash in a short time in the field.